We here at Beat On just want to say thank you for joining us every Saturday at noon for our virtual service. We appreciate your views, your engagement, and all of your donations. Continue to connect with us by following us on all of our social media platforms. Also, share our service and invite a friend. We hope to see you next Saturday. Tune in every Saturday in the week. Facebook Live for a powerful word from my pastor. Pastor Alonzo Walker, where you can learn and grow in your spiritual journey with Christ. And we love for you to be a part of our family. We look forward to seeing you next time. Everything that you need, we got it. Pastor Walker, 
pastor of the Bethel Deliverance Outreach Ministries, known as Beat On. We are so glad to be coming back into your homes today. Praise God. If God has kept you from last week to this week, you have been blessed. And certainly he has kept me, and I am so glad to be in a number one more time. Praise God. We thank God for being able to come to you by way of live stream, Facebook Live. But guess what? On next week, we will be live back in service. Huh? Yes, we are. We will be live back in service. Huh? So all of you, praise God, the desire to come and have services with us on next week, we'd be glad to have you. Um, notwithstanding, there's been a few changes. One, um, our services will start an hour earlier, right? An hour earlier, right? And that is 11 o'clock. Um, and hopefully, we'll be finished by 1 o'clock, consistent with the time that we are in now. And that is subject to the moving of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Got to add that in there. That is subject to the moving of the Holy Ghost. All right? Now, praise God. Now, that's our endeavor. If the Holy Ghost move otherwise, then we have to follow the Spirit. Praise God. Is that right? So, yes, we will be in service come October 1st, the first Sabbath in October. Services will start at 11 o'clock. You should be seeing that fly up right now. Praise God. Uh, you will be saying, uh, praise God. And we would like, because we know that some people um, desire to wear masks, and um, the CDC, uh, to my knowledge, have not mandated mask wearing uh, as of yet. So we are not mandating you to wear masks, but we desire for you to wear masks. How's that? <laughs> okay? We're not mandating you to wear masks, right? But we desire for you to wear masks, right? However, it is your option, right? It is your option. We're trying to get you to wear one because we know that. Um, you know, things can happen. Uh, things can happen. So we're just trying to use safety and caution. However, you know, if that's not your choice. We understand that too. We know some of you probably wear masks all day at work, and you don't want to come to church with a mask on because you've been doing it all week. Okay? Hey, if you've been um, boosted and shot and all that kind of good stuff, then do it. And if you haven't been, okay, that's still your choice. It's your choice, okay? And because people have choices, here's what we're going to try to endeavor to do. We're going to try to get wristbands uh, that are color-coded because you got different type of people in your services that have different, um, you know, way of doing things and the way they want to do things, right? So, some of you, I know at Beat On, we're used to hugging and embracing and all, okay, and greeting one another. That's a good thing, and that's what we normally do. But because of this COVID, some people may not want to do that, okay? Um, it's not that they don't want to hug, but it's the conditions that's in the earth why they desire to refrain from that. Okay, so here's what we're going to endeavor to do, and we're working on it. We hope to have it by next week, to have wristbands. If you are one of those individuals, okay, that still wants to hug and embrace, okay, you will have a green wristband, letting people know that I still want to hug, I still want to embrace, right? Now, then you have those that are opposite of you. Uh, at this time, not that I don't love you, <laughs> okay? Not that I don't love you, I still love you, but I'm being cautious here, so I don't want to hug. I don't want to embrace, right? You will have a red wristband, right? And when people see that red wristband, that will let them know that you are not one of the ones that desire to do that at this time. 
So we don't want everybody else that decided to do that. So, man, I'm telling you, these people here, they funny, man. I went to hug her, see, she didn't know she didn't want to be hugged. But they ask, people have a right. People have a right. People have a choice. You have a choice that you want to do it. They have a choice that they not want to do it. Respect everybody's choices. And that's what we endeavor to do. So if you don't want that, we we'll give you a red Miss Bay. Okay? Now, there are some of you, right, that um, don't want to hug either. Right? But I do want to show some sign of affection. Okay? We're going to give you a yellow wristband because that means caution. Right? <laughs> We're going to give you, you give a fist, right? Or, or both. Right? What's up, brother? Sister? Hey, all right now. Uh, that's, that's what you're going to get. In other words, I want to give you a little something. But, but I don't want to hug you. Neither, right, do I want to be too standoffish. I'm just showing you. I, I still love you. I still can. How about a little fist pump or elbow, you know, rub, right? So we'll give you a yellow band, right? So that's what we're going to try to endeavor to have on next week, okay? So um, let's try to be on time, right? Because time is of the essence. And um, we have new personnel there at the school, at Rosemaryville Elementary School, right? New personnel there, right? So we these people may not be as lenient as the other uh, janitors were to stay there longer than what their hours say so. So let's try to be on time so you can enjoy it, right? Also, um, probably for the first week or two, being that we're just coming back together in almost three years, right? We may not have prayer service or Bible class, right? But we will probably open our doors at 10, right, to allow for fellowship, right? Have some refreshments or something. And that way, you know, we don't have to be laying all out in the hallways where the service is going on because you've seen people for the first time in two or three years. You're talking, you're lot of gagging and, and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to allow time for that because we know we haven't seen one another in almost three years. So we'll have a time for a meeting and greeting. So if you get there around 10 o'clock, okay, uh, we can't have too much fancy stuff like we um, you know, normally try to do because of COVID, right? So we're going to limit, you know, the refractions, right, because of, you know, the conditions, right? But we'll have some form of refreshments and um, a time allotted for us to meet and greet, you know, your brother, your sister, or you ain't seen in almost two or three years, with the exception of the picnic, okay? So uh, we'll do that for at least uh, a couple of weeks, right? And then after that, a couple of weeks, everybody settle down, what have you, then we'll get to have uh, maybe our Bible class at 10 o'clock, right? Okay? Mm -hmm. How's that? Does that sound good? Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Today, we're going to try to give you a word today um, to encourage you but also warn you, we are in a dangerous time, okay, a dangerous time. We're in a Bible fulfillment time. Jesus talking about the pestilence in the land. Uh, the hearts, it's here, it's here, and it is killing people, right? We don't know how long it's going to be. So what has happened? Because of government mandates and those type of things, the church has went virtual. And as a result of the church going virtual, people have lowered their standard of righteousness mm -hmm. and their standards of living. Mm -hmm. Being inside, right? Tucked away with family. Some didn't have family, so you tucked away with some young lady or maybe some young man or friend or whatever the case may be, right? And we have been fasting as we should. I say as we should. I didn't say didn't fast. I'm saying as we should. And praying as we should. And as a result, people's spiritual antibodies are down. They are low, right? And people are making decisions in the midst of a bad spirit and mindset, right? Decisions that could affect you for a lifetime. And this is what you have to be careful about, 
right? When you have been out of church and have not been in the environment of the saints, which has its pros and its cons. Now, live, you know, Facebook Live is good. I mean, it was the best thing that could have happened, you know, for us in this time. That, that was, a, that was a, a, a blessing, right? That was a blessing. But it cannot take the place of the scriptures in what that 10, Hebrews 10, 25, 10, 26, saying, do not forget to assemble yourselves together as a matter of some, right? Assembling is important, believe it or not, right? Being there in person with one another is in person. I mean, is important. Being in service is important, right? Because of the environment, right? The love that you're getting, the embracement that you're getting, the joy that you're getting, the dance, the shouting, the hallelujah, the praise, all that is different in a church setting versus being at home watching Facebook Live, right? So, because we did not have that, right, our spirit has took a change without our permission, right? It's subtle. This is why the pastor was trying to have us going fast on Wednesdays to try to, try to rein the flesh in as best we can. Uh, and speaking of fasting, come next week, if you, if, if you can, you know, try to get in two. One Tuesday, another one Thursday. Huh? I've seen a guy probably ain't seen in 20 years. 20 years. <laughs> or more. Huh? And um, he had been through homelessness, ups and downs, drugs, traveling here, traveling there. And when I saw him, he said, Pastor Walker, how you doing? He all excited. I'm loving up on me, loving up on me. And then he said, you know what, Pastor Walker? Now, he's not, never was been a member, no. He said, you talked to me one time and life was like that day. And you told me, man, to go on a fast twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays. I'll never will forget that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I was so tickled, man. I ain't seen it in a car, no, how many years, right? And he brought that back. I can't even remember. But I know I must have said it because those are the days I normally fast on when I was young coming up, right? He said, you told me you want to fast. Pack a week. Tuesday and Thursday, right? <laughs> so I'm telling y'all like I told him back then. Twice a week. <laughs> uh, leading into this week's Tuesday and Thursday. Uh, so by the time Tuesday comes, you go on your fast. When you come home, you're going to have Wednesday night Bible class. So that's going to motivate your spirit, man, and start trying to lift it up. Why we want to go on a fast Tuesday? Right? To start getting that flesh position to be broken down, that the spirit man may come to the top. Right? Because you don't know what kind of sermon God going to give me come first Sabbath in October. And if you ain't prepared for that Saturday, and that sermon come forth with a rebuke or a reproof, and you ain't been fast, you ain't been praying, and you haven't been in those services, you subject to backslide or leave the church. Right? <laughs> so, I can't predict what kind of word I'm going to get. But one thing I will not do, be trying to find a way not to bring that word so you won't get offended. <laughs> uh, that's not Pastor Walk. Right? That's not Pastor Walk. Pastor Walk going to deliver that word. Uh, because reproof, rebuke, instruction, right, has its place. Now, it may not appear like love to you. Right? Because now you've been out of service a long time and ain't nobody been doing that too tough. Right? And that don't seem like love. It has its place. Right? Sweetness, kindness, loving, hugging have its place. Uh, and it's time. Is that right? So we don't know, so we got to get in shape by fasting and praying and presenting ourselves in a way that God can use us, that God can be upon us. And receiving whatever God has for us. Is that all right? Okay, I took your time up here. Let's pray. And then we're going to go into the word, 2 Timothy 2. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, again, we come before you to thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy and your loving kindness. Thank you for seeing another day, Lord, we never seen before. Lord, if it had not been for you on our side, where would we be? 
glory to God. But we thank you, O oh God, for you kept us and allowed us another chance to come back one more time to hear your word. God, prepare our hearts, our mind, and our soul, and our spirit to receive your word today. Circumcise our heart. Circumcise our soul. Yes, Lord, that we may feel the anointing and the power of God. God, keep us, Lord, in the hour of temptation. Folks are falling by the wayside. And, Lord, I don't want to be lost. We don't want to be lost. We come too far, God, to turn back now. Oh, come. Let your arms be around us. Protect us, Lord, from going either to the left or to the right, but stand still and see the salvation of God. In the name of Jesus, our soul says, Amen. Amen. Glory to God. We thank Him. Thank Him for His Word. Thank Him for His Spirit, His presence. Again, we want to direct your attention to the book of 2 Timothy 2. And we want to speak to you from the subject today. God is looking for a soldier. God is looking for a soldier. If it has ever been a time in history as it relates to church, it is now time for the church to stand up and be a soldier. Huh? Soldiers have to weather all manner of storms. Uh, let me get in this word. I'm already ready to preach already. Mm. Read this thing. First, let me get read some of that. First verse. Now therefore, my son. Now Paul is talking to Timothy here, and he is entreating him as a son. Mm -hmm. Now, Timothy is not his biological son, but he loved Timothy, and he had begotten Timothy in the gospel. And Timothy is a new pastor. Mm -hmm. He knows that Timothy is going to face many ups and downs, many oppositions, many hurts, right? And he has to be strong because people come and go in the church, right? People die in the spirit, just like people die fleshly on the battlefield, right? But here's the thing. And it's so unfortunate. Somebody got to do it. Hmm. Somebody got to do it. Somebody got to fulfill it. It may even be me. It may be you. Hmm? What are you saying, Pastor? Gird up the loans of your mind. Sometimes best friends, um, become, people become best friends in the army and, and, and they see their best friend get blow up. How does that affect your mind? Huh? How does that affect your mind? How can you go forth when you have seen that? Huh? I'll go a little further with that in just a minute. And I'll be given types of allegories as it relates to the army and the church. Be strong. Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Look what he's saying here. Timothy. Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Now, now listen to that. Now this might go over your head. Grace is not strength. Grace is not the Holy Ghost. What grace is, is an opportunity to receive those things. Huh? Be strong in the grace. In other words, if God gives you grace, and what is grace? He called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. He gave you a chance to be saved when he didn't give it to your brother, didn't give it to your sister, your cousin, your nephew, your aunt, your, or whatever. He gave it to you. That's an opportunity. Okay? Now that you have the opportunity, you have to fight. Mm -hmm. Good God Almighty. Huh? You got to fight to stay in that opportunity. Huh? You got to stay. Huh? Fight to stay in that opportunity. Opportunity to do what? Jesus died on the cross for you. And grace gives us access to the throne of God that we may receive his spirit. Huh? So grace is an opportunity. It's not strength. It's not power. It's not anointing. It's opportunity to get those things. Mm -hmm. Are you hearing me? And if you don't take advantage of that, right, by being strong, why did he admonish you to be strong? Because things going to happen, Timothy. 
Don't be deceived because you're in a church and you think everything's going to fall in line. No, it's not. Things going to happen. Huh? You're going to be talked about. Ridiculed. Hurt. You can't stop serving. Huh? You can't stop preaching. People are going to walk away. Scandalize your name. In the midst of all of that, you got love the same people. This is not human nature. This is godly nature. Glory to God. Huh? And the problem with the church, they're not getting God's uh, godly nature. Mm -hmm. They want to operate in knowledge mm -hmm. without the benefit of power to carry out that knowledge. Huh? Glory to God. Huh? Knowledge is power, good God of mine, as it relates to the word. But as it relates to God, you need God. Uh, and when you get God, he'll give you knowledge. Uh, knowledge that is divine, not the letter. Huh? Glory to God. A lot of people here got the letter of knowledge, thinking they got the divine knowledge. And when they get the letter of knowledge, they start challenging their leader. Huh? They start challenging their leader. Start correcting their leader. Huh? Glory to God. Let me tell you something, uh, there's a time and a place. Huh? There's a time for you to learn. It's time for you to absorb all you can while you're young. Mm -hmm. uh, this ain't time you be instructing the leader. Some of y'all ain't been called to that. I got one person to help me with that. Uh, his name is Rylan, Assistant Pastor Rylan Anderson. That's his responsibility. Mm -hmm. That's his responsibility to help me with that. And even when he helps me, he has to pray to make sure that he's in alignment with God and me. Uh, and if I'm out of alignment with God, he takes that to God uh, so God can touch my mind and touch my heart to make the right and proper decisions. Uh, are you hearing me? Mm -hmm. So you have to be careful with that. Are you hearing me? Uh, glory to God. And if you stay in your own tent door, which is important at this time, at this time, right? Because people are falling by the wayside. People are giving up. Church doors are closing. Hmm? Glory to God. People are tired. People are weary because they hadn't been in church. Uh, feeling the fellowship, feeling the power, feeling the love. And this thing here, what we're doing there, is a conduit. It's a mediator. Uh, it's something to, to, to give us to hold fast until we can get in that environment. Uh, are you hearing me? Glory to God. But even that environment, even that environment, doesn't do it for you. You got to come prepared for the environment. Huh? Some of y'all are going to come looking hmm? and not bring nothing with you. Hmm? And that's a problem. Huh? Oh, I can't wait to get to church. I can't wait. And nobody's making preparation. And when you get there, you're going to be disappointed because the spirit is not going to meet you there. And when the spirit don't meet you there, then you're going to be blaming everybody. You know, I think it cause this was the music. We ain't had music. I think it was cause of the pastor. You know, that last pastor, uh, message pastor preached, he hurt our feelings. You're going to cover everybody but you. Huh? You got to bring something. Huh? Oh, missionary Tab, I think she was off a little bit. She ain't sing like she used to. Huh? Yeah, and you ain't consecrated yourself like you used to. <laughs> uh, when you consecrate yourself, let me tell you some practice. Anything somebody do in the church will affect you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so I can just say, Hallelujah, you can go for it. You know what I'm saying? You right there with it. <laughs> that spirit man is, is on fire. Uh, so somebody got to say, G You ain't get Jesus out yet. Gee, you knew they was going, Jesus, go ahead. Uh, you already there. Uh, <laughs> uh, go over there. God, man, say, I'm already there. Uh, and that's how you got to come already there. Don't get there to get there. Uh, come already there. Mm -hmm. That's why pastors are calling these fasters. Come already there. Mm -hmm. Hear the word of God. Usher in the spirit of God. Some of us can't do it without music. Mm -hmm. You don't have the music, some of us be lost. Uh, music is good. It's very good. But music can also be deceptive. Saul could only prophesy 
with that deceiving spirit when he had music. When that music didn't play, Saul couldn't do it. And that's how people are, right? You're so used to having music, and you're so used to having somebody usher in for you as a worshiper, till you literally come empty. Well, out preparing yourself to come before the Lord. When you're coming for the Lord, you need to prepare yourself. Huh? When God told Moses, tell the people come around the Mount Sinai, he said, tell them my husband stay away from their wife for three days. Huh? Tell them to do this, tell them to do that. They needed to sanctify themselves before they come before him. Huh? And this is what Pastor Walker is telling you to do. Sanctify yourself before you come to the house of God. Don't come there looking for somebody to bring it for you. Mm -hmm. huh? You bring yours. Huh? You come ready. That way can't nobody steal your joy. Can't nobody take your joy. Glory to God. Huh? Because God is the one that gave you that joy. Because you sought him. Huh? Whom your soul loved. Huh? Glory to God. Read what it says. And the things that thou hast heard of me among uh -huh. many witnesses. It, watch this now. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses. Stop right there. You see, Paul now is telling the young pastor, I have a record. <laughs> uh, I have a record. Watch this. Now, all of my record may not be good. Uh, I've done some things that I shouldn't have done. But guess what? That's part of the record. <laughs> uh, there's no man of God that's living has done 100% right in anything. None. Hmm? None. But it is part of the record. But I promise you this. His good is certainly going to outweigh his bad. But for leadership's sake, you have to know both sides. <laughs> Huh? If that wasn't the case, God would have put one God, one tree in the garden. <laughs> huh? He would have put one tree in the garden, but he did not. Huh? Why God didn't do that? It was like a simple thing. I don't want Adam to sin. Right? And to prevent Adam from sinning, put one tree in the garden. It was just that simple. Why he put two trees in the garden? Because God don't want it to be where you are forced to obey him. Mm. Made to obey him. He wanted to be free will. And he had to allow you to be tried, tested, and tempted. So he can see where your heart is. Glory to God. Uh, so in that, uh, and being human, some choices you're going to make are not going to always be right uh, because you're human in nature and you're of the flesh. Uh, and there are some choices you're going to do that's going to be right. you got to have both. Mm -hmm. uh, there must be negative and positive. <laughs> Come on, huh? And the negative and positive working together. Huh? Good God Almighty. Those dynamics create, good God Almighty, the energy and the power to make a battery run. Uh, a battery can't run on all negative, and it can't run on all positive. He got to have both of them. Uh, and watch this. And when that battery get down, even though you got to have a, 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 a post, right? The post there, and, and, and then those, um, what you call it, um, the wires that go on that thing? Um, there you go, them jumper cables. Uh, them jumper cables got to be hooked up, right? Negative with negative, and positive with positive. Uh, why? Because you gotta have it. Mm -hmm. uh, there's connectivity. Uh, good God Almighty. To make that battery work, you gotta have bad and good in life. You gotta have negative and positive in life. That's what makes you who you are. Mm -hmm. uh, glory to God. Uh, that's what gives you experience. Mm -hmm. If you were all good and all you knew was good, None of us will be able to stand the wiles of the devil because he has mastered evil, but all you know is good. So if all you know is good, you are no match for him. 
Huh? Because when he sent out those wows, you don't have the experience to count up those wows. Because you never sold bad, you never experienced bad, you never sold downward. Everything was always good. Uh, and that's how people want it in the church. They want it all good. Pastor, uh, give me my fix when I come. Uh, I want you to make me shout. I want you to make me dance. Uh, and if the pastor don't do that, and he hurt you, uh, and that's not what you're used to, because you're used to that joy, you're used to that jumping, you're used to that shouting, uh, and you want that fix. Mm? You see, a man that's on drugs, he got to have that fix. Mm? And if he don't get that fix, he'll get sick. And that's how people are. Huh? If they don't get that joy, if they don't get that anointing, I would say, I was like, hmm, it's all right. Huh? What, what, what was wrong? He ain't had the same joy. Mm. Mm. He ain't had the same joy. Mm -mm. You know how be down just be all five and have that joy? Mm. Mm. It wasn't like that. Mm. They don't understand seasons. You cannot have an all summer season. Huh? If you have an all summer season, it's going to create problems in the earth. Huh? Because there's no snow to kill off diseases. Mm -hmm. huh? Glory to God. Huh? And to kill off viruses. Hmm? Those things are going to come and it's going to kill folk. Huh? Because all it's been is a summer. Huh? The fruit and the vegetables that you look for Huh? It's going to die because it cannot stand heat for 12 months. It got to have a cycle of rain. Springtime has to come to water them. Mm -hmm. huh? Are you hearing me? God prepares the ground in the fall. Hmm? <laughs> huh? Church got to have the same seasons, but folks don't want those seasons. They want it all good. Mm -hmm. They want it all joy. They want it all known. Pastor, what they got to do with a soldier, though? You said be a soldier. A soldier have to weather all of those conditions and fight in rain. Frigid weather. Hmm? Got to be in fox hoses with people he may not like that he had argued with. They got to learn to get along if they're going to survive. Huh? When it's cold and there's no vegetation, Right? He got to eat things to survive that he don't eat at home, like barbecue chicken, uh, steak and onions. Uh, he might have to find some leaves. Uh, he might eat a grasshopper or a locust. Uh, yeah, eat what he can to survive. That's how life is becoming in church, though. Huh? You got to get what you can, when you can. And you got to know how to survive at all seasons. All seasons. Can't have summer season in church all the time. Mm -hmm. There's a season in church, right? Where it's cold, it's windy. Now, don't nobody want that. Uh, that's when they're ready to run. Mm -hmm. That's when they're ready to go. Yeah, I'm going over here. Mm -hmm. I'm going over there. Mm -hmm. They got to run. Why are you going over there? Got to get that fixed. Uh, I got to get that fixed. Mm -hmm. Hmm? People going to everybody churches during the pandemic. Huh? Everybody church. You don't know when you go to all these churches, spirits in all these churches. Mm -hmm. hmm? Spirits in all these churches. Huh? And once you go to all them churches, connecting all those spirits in you, hmm? that you don't realize huh? because you need that fix. Mm -hmm. huh? Even in the drug world, you know all drugs not the same? Huh? You know some drugs are cut differently. Yeah. Huh? yeah. They might say it's hair wrong. But this man cut his stuff with something different. Mm -hmm. uh, and that stuff go up in your tail and kick it. Uh, you run around with all these spirits. Uh, you jumping and going all of that. And your inner man is receiving all that mess. Cause you to be weak. Uh, and when a good word come, you ain't going to be able to stand it. Because you have been to all them places to get your fix. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Get your shout on. Get your dance on. Get that soft word that tell you everything going to be all right. Uh, everything gonna be all right, uh, and some old false prophet gonna dab it with untempered more than greed. 
God said, go ahead. Go ahead. And because you done left the standard of God in your church and you done been all in it, you don't have the eyes to identify. Hmm? You don't have the eyes to identify whether being a soldier and whether the conditions. Huh? Whether those conditions. Whether those conditions their hearts makes you a soldier. You got to know how to perform in the winter. Perform in the fall. Perform in the summer. You got to know how to do that. Because it's going to be in the church. Huh? I'm reminded when the gardener came in the fall to trim our rose bushes. Man, he hacked those things some kind of bad. Huh? That rose bush was a nice big old rose bush. Flower on it. Man, he hacked that thing down so bad, man, it looked like he killed it. Huh? Man, Walter went out there, first thing went out there, looked at that thing, said, Man, look what he did. Oh, man, he thought that he didn't like kill that thing. Huh? And that's how some of y'all do me. When you hear me gutting and rebuking, Pastor kill him, Pastor hurt him. Huh? I don't think he was right. Huh? I don't think he was in the spirit. Guess what? First lady not a God, neither is Pastor Walker. And Pastor Walker felt the same way First Lady did, for real. I ain't like how that bush looked. Huh? Come back out there this spring, that thing the same size of the last one with more flowers. He knew what he was doing. Let the pastor do his job, mm -hmm. and you do your job. Stay in your lane. Mm -hmm. Stay in your lane. It's time for a soldier to be a soldier. He has to soldier. When he get to be a sergeant, a captain, a lieutenant, all them different ranks come with different levels of responsibilities. Uh, watch this. Different levels of secrets of the army being revealed. Mm. Yes. They don't tell privates nothing but do and obey. <laughs> uh, corporal's just a step above the private. And watch this. And once you get to be where pastor is and be where the generals are, those that have been in this thing, those that got rank, listen at this, and this may sound, it may sound terrible. It may sound bad, but it's reality. Those generals had gotten immune to people getting killed. It don't affect them like they affect you. Why? Because they don't care. Don't have them do with that. Have to do with their job. They can't let that get in their heart. Hmm? They got to give orders. They got to give orders knowing that a person going to die. Hmm? They got to get orders to tell 10, 15, 20, 30 men to take that hill. And he know he's sacrificing their life. He know they ain't going to make it back. But they got to die that the other 50,000 can live. Huh? And he can't worry about their death. Ain't that something? He can't go home and cry about that. That's part of the job. Pastor see people come. He didn't see them go. He didn't see them give resignation. He didn't see them do all kind of stuff. Pastor then got to the level that he got to keep marching on. Mm -hmm. hmm? Now, ministers, ain't, them, them generals ain't going to break down garage, somebody lead an army, somebody got killed. Da, da, da. Their hearts, we can't do that. We can't do that. We have to be a soldier for God because lives are at stake. And if we don't get immune, when these things happen, you're going to get soft in the inside. And you're gonna not going to make the, the decisions that's hard that affect people's lives that's going to hurt them. Hmm? Hear what Jerome Powell said this week? And he said the week of the months before, he said, I'm going to keep up with these interest rates till I can control inflation. All the investors fired up there. Hmm. He's going to wreck the economy. He's going to cause the economy to shame. He shouldn't be doing that. Huh? And they're saying that because for 10 years, the economy went up. The stocks went up. They made millions and billions. Hmm? Now, since COVID, things have changed. 
Mm -hmm. He should have did that early. He should, might have. But he can't go back and get that. He got to do what's necessary, hit back against the wall. If I don't raise interest rate, then the economy and inflation is going to get out of control. If I raise interest rates, it may cause people to lose their jobs. Right? It may cause right, people to lose money. Right? But I got to suffer with the thousands to save the millions from a collapsing economy. Now the people are spoiled because the stock been going up for so many years and now they're blessed. Nothing keeps going up. And you have to learn that. Mm -hmm. And every message won't be a message. Of, uh, there has to be a message of training. There has to be a message of instruction. There has to be a message of teaching. There has to be a message of preaching. You got to have all of those things. Uh, but everybody wants the good only. It don't work like that. It don't work in God. It don't work in an economist. It don't work in the military. It don't work in life. Gird up the laws of your mind and be a soldier. Huh? People crying, losing money. I'm hurt. Hmm? Stock just going down, just losing money. Hmm? Well, see, I had joined a couple of investment firms. And there's been times where in when the market did this. We just listening to the investment advisor, right, held on to the stock, though it was going down. Hmm? Always losing money. And all of a sudden, he started getting emails, right? And he allowed his assistant to read some of the emails that people were sending him. You caused us to lose money. You ain't no good. You told us to get this and that it was going to go up. Hmm? And look at it, I done lost 30%. I done lost 40%. And you talking about hold on? You talking about hold on? He said, look, this investment is good. They have a good balance sheet. They have good management. This is a future stock that's going to go up. But because of the conditions of the market, it's down right now. Oh, shit, that, that ain't what you said. Uh, now, they wasn't raising Cain when all his stock was going up and they was making thousands. Now, the conditions that he can't control. Uh, but he's telling them, look, have strong hands. Don't sell the stock. I'll tell you when to sell the stock. Right? I'll tell you. They sell the stock anyway. Mm -hmm. Nobody sells sell the stock anyway? They can't stand the loss. See, and this is how members are, right? They can't stand to lose nobody. They can't stand for the church to be down. Huh? They can't stand for us to lose money. They can't stand for us to house. All those things going to happen. Huh? Because it's time and seasons. Huh? George Benson, a famous guitar player, bought a song, everything must change. Nothing stays the same. Huh? Yeah, he put a little melody to it. <laughs> uh, he never had a plan. But he had experience enough to know that nothing's changed. So when the market crashed, uh, well, it didn't crash yet. Start going down, I was holding on. Right? I was holding on. Then, right, when I decided to want to sit, I said, well, look, because knowledge teaches me, after being in the stock market for a while, when they raise interest rates, Tech normally go down. Hmm? Tech normally go down when interest rates are raised. So I called my broker. Look, this man is going to continue to raise interest rate because of the company. I got X amount of thousands, right, in tech. I think we need to change some of this, right? Now here's my understanding of logic. Because I'm not exactly a novice. I'm not like him, but I'm not exactly a novice. I'm cash low. Now, if he keep raising the interest rate, uh, my tech stocks are constantly going down. Watch this. 
I need to shed some because he's going to continue to raise it. And I have no money raised that when they do go down, I can buy them on the low. Huh? I ain't selling them out of panic. I'm selling them out of positioning. Good God Almighty. Huh? Huh? See, see, you may see the same action, but spiritual people do things for different reasons. Huh? I'm selling them for positioning because I'm in a, a position when it comes to cash. My cash in this, right, is lower. So when they sell off and people panic because the market is going down, they're going to sell those good stocks too. But I ain't in position to buy them because all of my money is in them right now and they're going down. I need to shed some. Don't shed all of them, but raise me some cash that when these people that are in experience begin to faint and sell theirs on the cheap, I'm going to buy them on the low. Mm. That when they bounce back, good God about it, huh? my pocket's going to bounce back. Huh? So it is in a natural soul that in the spirit. Uh, you got to know what to do when times are low and when things are bad. Uh, rather than panic and run. Huh? Glory to God. Huh? You can stand. And when you stand, huh, God will preserve you. God will keep you. And God will give you some knowledge and some wisdom. Watch this. About the chaos. About the trouble. Huh? Because sometimes trouble brings about good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> huh? You may get a prophecy. Or a vision. Hmm? Listen to the instruction. You may get a prophecy or a vision that you're going to be here. And you see that thing. Huh? And when you see that thing, you come out your dream, man. Whoo, go, go, go. Hallelujah. Whoo, God, show me. Show me what happened. Church, I'm going to be preaching, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But what he didn't show you, but what it was going to take to get there. Hmm? Might show you he was going to have riches. Oh, man, God, show me my head money. Huh? I'm going to go out here and start me a business, bro, bro, bro. you start going, doing things, man. You buying up stuff, man. Trying to raise that money, trying to get money for your business because you just had a vision and you ain't take time to understand the vision. Mm -hmm. You didn't take time to see whether there's a, a calendar date with that vision. Was that for now? Or was that God showing you something for the future? Hmm? You ain't take time to wait. You join and then go spend all your money. I don't think you're going to make thousands of dollars and you lose. Because huh? you didn't understand the vision. Mm -hmm. huh? Again, some visions got to come with pain and suffering, right? For it to bring about what God showed you. Watch this. God shows Joseph that he's going to be over his father, going to be over his mother, going to be over his brothers. Let him know. Huh? Boy, he ain't excited. Huh? He come tell his father. Dad, huh? God showed me. He said, I was in the field huh, with the sheaves with my brother. And my sheep is still upright. Huh? And all the rest of the sheep, they made obeisance to me. Huh? Brothers heard it and everybody fired up at them because they know what that meant. Did you tell me you're going to be over us? Huh? Boy, he is like, then he come back and tell his father. Dad, I had another dream. I saw the sun and the moon and the 11 stars. Huh? Made a pieces to me. Father looked at him like, are you crazy? You think your mother gonna bow to you? But the father took note. But what God did not show him was the process mm -hmm. that was gonna bring that about. <laughs> huh? Didn't tell him that his brothers was gonna try to kill him. Huh? Didn't tell him he's gonna be thrown down in a, a pit. Huh? Didn't tell him that. Didn't tell him. That he was going to be sold in another country. Didn't tell him that. Didn't tell him he was going to be tossed in a jail cell. Didn't tell him that. Huh? But that's how people do when they get a vision. And the pastor's going to try to talk to you, try to train it up. I know what God showed me. I know what he showed me. God showed me here. I ain't going to let nobody hold me down. Step on my neck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> uh, 
So you people don't teach you about the process. Mm -hmm. uh, the process. Uh, yeah, Jesus was going to be, uh, he was born the son of God. King of kings. Save the world. But it was a process. They scandalized his name. They talked about him like a dog. They talked about his parents, say him, call him a child of Beelzebub, and they was born through fornication. He's a whole child. Huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. When you read that, you just read all on top of that, because see, you ain't got no experience. Mm -hmm. Read on top of these principles, the things that Jesus had to suffer. Uh, and he, the Bible said, though he was a son, yet learn. Yet learn. Talk about the same. The same. Had to learn. Obedience. How did he learn? Oh, he learned it because he came to the church and got that shot on him. Uh, he got his buck on him. Uh, he danced. He didn't say that. How did he learn it, Pastor Paul? By the things which he suffered. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People don't want to suffer nothing. You got to suffer something, dear folks, to get where God wants you to go. Mm -hmm. Not only did he suffer somewhere on earth, uh, they hung him high, stretched a wide, pins aside off. And even he said, after knowing the will, as the father, why did he forsake him? Because flesh was crying out. But one thing about it, he was a soldier. He didn't come down. <laughs> huh? He didn't come down. Hmm? He didn't come down. Hmm? Let me tell you something. But he felt the infirmity. Now I spoke to y'all over Wednesday, and I spoke to my boy. So I was, hey, look, pastor, is feeling tight. I'm feeling the weight of this thing. Pastor aging. Pastor ain't the same man. Time has brought about a change. But let me tell you something about that. That don't mean pastor is giving up. Uh, you see, in the boxing world, Muhammad Ali had an opponent named George Foreman. Hmm? Titus in the past. In pastor's remarks. When he looked at George Foreman, he knew he couldn't go in there and beat George Foreman off the break. He didn't have power. Hmm? George Foreman was powerful. And Ali wanted his belt. But he had to go through him to get that belt. So while he's training, Dundee is training him, right? He gets a vision. He gets a vision how to beat him. And he doesn't share the vision. Hmm? He doesn't share it. And the vision was, after watching him, they come to him how to beat him. He said, this man never went past five rounds. He knocked everybody out within one to five rounds. If I can, if I can stay with him for over five rounds and time out, I can beat him. Watch this. Now that is the strategy. And the strategy is right. But the question is, can you stay with him? <laughs> huh? Can he endure that pain? That's going to be afflicted. Right? And he knew that too. So what did he do? He had to build himself up. He had to build himself up. He got to run. He exercised. Huh? He's training. He's building himself up. Never told nobody the vision. Huh? So he goes out there. Right? And they get to fight. And he created this strategy called the rope -a the rope -a huh? And the strategy was cover your vitals. Huh? Cover your chin. Cover your temples. Because these are the things that if he hit, you're going to sleep. Hmm? But you're going to have to give up something. Oh, that's a God. Huh? That's what people got to understand about God. Huh? You got to give up something for success. Hmm? So he had to give up all his body. Glory to God. Huh? To wear this man down. Mm. Huh? And when he went in, he carried out his strategy. And he got wore down. 
Huh? It wore them down. That man was lifting them off the ground, bringing punches all the way from Georgia. Oh, 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 man, he's lifting them off the ground. His face is crunching. Huh? And everybody in the corner, get off the ropes. They feel it for him because they see the pain inflicted on them, just like y'all looking at your pastor. Huh? Seeing your pastor, looking at the pain, you're, you're, you're feeling it for him. Pastor, I don't want you to suffer like this. Pastor, I don't want you to go through like this. Pastor, you look at defeated. And I understand that. Good God, man. I thank God for your prayers. I thank God for your concerns. But I want you to know uh, that pastor ain't going nowhere. Uh, pastor just roping dope it right now. Good God, man. Uh, so after a while, mm, when he took that pain and looked like he was defeated and looked like he was giving up, and the corner people and the audience, everybody was concerned for him because they don't know what he know. Good God, man. Uh, he wasn't at liberty to share uh, where he was. Uh, so he took on that pain and that punishment, and you can see him crunching and cringing, uh, good God Almighty, from the effects of the blows of the fight. Are you hearing me? Sometimes pastors can feel the blows. Uh, glory to God. Sometimes they get tall. Mm, glory to God. But past an old soldier, John, just like all he was. Uh, so he go back to the corner, sit down. They said, man, look, you can't be on the ropes. You got to get off the ropes. And he's looking and he's thinking. He said, oh, I can't take too much more of this punishment. Mm -hmm. The strategy is right. But I got to take him with this guy. I got just a little bit more strength left. Huh? So he go back there huh, and fake him out a little bit. I'm causing him to come in and he get back on the ropes. Huh? When he get back on the ropes, he just going for him. But now his arms is getting weary. Mm -hmm. huh? His arms are getting tired. Huh? Ali is conditioned. Though it's hurting him, he's conditioned. Uh, and so when they're getting tired, uh, good God Almighty, the puncher slowed up. The power uh, wasn't as strong. He come back off the go. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, when he hit that, you uh, see that past 65 on there. You see that? <laughs> I ain't dead. <laughs> I ain't dead, dear. Uh, good God Almighty. I'm just like Ali. Yeah, I feel the pain. Uh, I feel the roughness, uh, but pastor know what to do. Uh, I turn my plate down, and I went before the Lord. So God strengthen me when I'm weak at them. Build me up when I'm torn down. Lord, I need your strength. I need your power. Lord, I got to God. Shut it down. Good God Almighty. Uh, pastor ain't going nowhere. I'm here to stay. Uh, good God from Zion. Paul told Timothy, no man that boy entangled himself uh, with the affairs of this life. That he may please him that has called him to be a soldier. I want you to know that I'm not entangled. Good God Almighty. My heart is not weak. Good God from Zion. But I feel the infirmity of the flesh. Just like Ali did. Just like Paul did. Just like Jesus did. Good God Almighty. But I'm telling you right now. My mind is made up. And my heart is fixed. That I am set for the defense of the gospel. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Ain't going nowhere. Uh, everybody got to be true. Everybody got to go through. Everybody got to bear their own weight and their own suffering. But the thing is, can you come off the ropes? Hallelujah. When you hit hard, can you come off the ropes? Can you humble yourself to be obedient? Can you take the suffering? Good God Almighty, you got folks that can't take the suffering. Folks that can't take a rebuke, can't take a reprove. Good God Almighty, and they don't stay in the fight, but they give up. Good God Almighty, don't give up because you're getting hit. You're going to get hit sometime. A good fighter going to get hit, but you got to be able to take a punch. Good God Almighty, I've seen people get hit with left hands, get hit with right hands, and they grab their opponent, and they tell the audience that ain't hurt. That ain't hurt. And that, he felt that thing all the way down to the bottom of his feet. But he said, that ain't hurt. And he tell the opponent, that ain't hurt. Huh? He's faking him out. But he's still in the fight. Good God Almighty. I ain't going to tell you it ain't hurt. But I'm still in the fight. And I'm worn. And I ain't going nowhere. I'm still here to help you. I'm still here to serve. Call it a dog. Uh, well, Pastor, we was feeling for you. I'm here to tell you that we have this treasure in earthly vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Hallelujah! Ah, uh, glory to God. I ain't going nowhere. I'm a soldier of God, and I'm trying to train you to be a soldier of God. You young men that's watching, you young men that's looking, and your young ladies that's looking. Good God. 
somebody looking and serve, but keep your mouth shut. Uh, stay in your corner and learn something. You can't learn through talking. You can't learn through always trying to tell somebody what to do. Don't train the trainer. Uh, the trainer's here to train you. Good God from Zion. Huh? Trainer's here to train you. Uh, and they're going to train you and hurt you sometime. Uh, he's going to train you, upset you sometime. Uh, going to make you mad sometime. But you got to be trained. Uh, you got to be go through. Huh? Good God from Zion. Oh my God, about a week or so ago, went down and visited this young man. Uh, and I knew that he was tired of folks getting out on him. Uh, ain't doing their part of the labor. Hmm? They ain't doing their part of the labor. Got a lot of mouth, but no works. And he's doing the works by himself. Uh, and maybe a couple men may help him. Uh, I said, look here, son. Don't you worry about that. You do your part. I said, let me tell you something. I said, see, everybody wants the chief seats. They want to be pastors, pastors, and elders. Uh, but they don't want to do the work. Uh, they don't want to do the service. I say, son, you doing the service. Uh, I say, when God sent Samuel down to Jesse's house, uh, let's look a little bit closer, son. When he sent them down there, I said, he went down there amongst all them sons uh, that Jesse had. Uh, and he got to one of them, all them boys trying to be the king. Uh, and he got to one of them, and that man really looked like he was the king. Good God Almighty. And God told him, say, look not on his statue. Huh? Don't look at his statue. Mm -hmm. Men God judged the outward appearance, but I judged the heart. Huh? So nothing moved on him. Nothing moved on him. So he said, do you got another son around here, Jesse? He said, yeah. I'm going to strip him. I'm throwing them up. Because he ain't in training of the traditional training. Mm. Hmm? He's in training through service. Mm. Hmm? An unpopular job that nobody want to do. Hmm? He out there cleaning the poop of the sheep. Hmm? He's out there huh, in a mystical job. Hmm? Nobody won't. Don't even know he out there. While everybody else was standing to get prayer for the kingship, he's still out there serving. Huh? Serving. He said, yeah, I got one. Stripping. Huh? He said, go get him. Go out there, get David. Come out there. Good God of mine. Uh, from the poop. Uh, Raunch. Body. Clothes. Staunch. With the smell of sheep. Uh, with the smell of service. Good God of mine. That nobody wanted. Uh, but the Lord said, anoint him. Glory to God. Huh? I said, son, don't you worry about it. God is going to anoint you. For doing the job that don't nobody else want to do. That doing the service that nobody else want to do. Uh, and when I hit those words, and because he's been serving, that thing hit him. Boom! Boy, he took it. Uh, and began to speak in tongues. That thing hit him from the crown of his head to the servant feet. And he jumped up, started walking on the way he goes. Good God Almighty. Because uh, that anointing was on him because of the service that he was doing. Uh, don't demise and despise uh, Humble mean this generation is arrogant. Everybody wants the offices without the service, without the work. You can't be a soldier until you go through boot camp. Huh? Glory to God. Everybody with the big seats. And y'all that he's looking down on, y'all that they ain't got no offices, uh, you might be the very one that take their seats. All the ones that wants to be the chief. Because nobody wants to humble themselves mm -hmm. and be a soldier. First, go through your boot camp. Go through your chain of command. These positions of trustees, deacons, ministers, they're different chains of development. Mm -hmm. huh? You may seem small to you, but when you haven't learned to take instruction, Without running your mouth, huh? When you haven't learned to be obedient, without combating, talking about how you feel, what you think it ought to be, what you think we'll do, you're not in position to train the pastor 
Huh? You in position to take orders. Huh? And that goes with the entire church. God called us to be soldiers. Huh? He called us to be soldiers. And when you don't take orders, and when you don't use humility, huh? Another spirit will come in and take over that looks like the true spirit. Hmm? Y'all don't believe me? Let me get this story here. I'm going to show you about a man. He wouldn't take instruction. Had the true spirit. And they got replaced with another. And that man hadn't changed from the time that Samuel instructed him what to do. And it was 40 years later, it came back to harm. Let's go to um, 1 Samuel 28. 1 Samuel 28. God is looking for a soldier. God is looking for a soldier. And people are folding under pressure. Huh? Folding under pressure. And people don't want to hear instruction when it's time to take instruction. There's a time and season for everything. See, I was a young man. I had to take instructions. Now, all the instructions I didn't like. Hmm? I was instructed to bring people to church in the snow. I didn't like that. When I did that, I ran in a ditch. Yes, I did. I was fired up. Fired up. Snow, rain, sleep. I didn't like it. Son, did you go up on the roof there, tar that roof up there? I don't know nothing about talking. Nothing. Nothing. Hold out. That's a good. Hmm? Every week this man keeping me, 11, 12 o'clock at night at church with my family. I'm hating it. I'm mad. One day I got so mad. I'm in the church in the dark. Everybody else, they all gone upstairs and eating or whatever. I'm in there. Them demons start talking to me. Them demons say, you a man. <laughs> you are a man. He disrespecting your manhood. You need to stand up and tell him about what he doing. Boy, them demons got the best of me, boy. And I jumped up to go do that. I'm going to tell you. Went to step, and when I got to the door of his office, that spirit rose up in me, the true Holy Ghost, and took all that anguish away. That's what the true spirit will do. Mm -hmm. When they come to a man of God, that's what the true spirit will do. When I got to that door, boy, that thing said, and he looked up at me, and God touched his heart. He said, you ready to go, son? I said, yes, sir. So, so get back to take fast walk, uh, uh, walk, 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 And guess what? I'm here today to preach to y'all. <laughs> Good God, my. Huh? Don't let them demons talk to you when you get frustrated and tired mm -hmm. with the leader. Huh? And no time that I instructed him that he asked me a question. Boy, Walker, what do you think? Then that's my time to speak my heart. That's my time to speak my mind. You asked me. <laughs> I can't get mad at him. You, you, you know, you, you ask me what? So I'm telling you what I see. Well, you might not agree with him, but I'm just telling you what I see. And it's all right to do that, because he invited you in. He invited you in, hold your peace, pray. <laughs> you got 28? I'm going to show you about a man who was called to be a soldier, but he failed his test. Let me give you a little background on the story. This ain't the story. This is the results of, watch this, his disobedience and his lack of repenting to a man that he had tried to kill. Right? He never came clean to David. And because he never came clean to David, that left a porter for the enemy to come in 
on top of his disobedience and deceive him. Hmm? And he took on another spirit. You know what we call that spirit? A familiar spirit. I'm going somewhere with this. With my congregation and with my leaders. The word familiar in the natural. Let me give you that definition. Familiar. Those with whom one is closely acquainted. That's what familiar means. Then you have what you call familiar spirit. Huh? A familiar spirit is a spirit that knows the way of righteousness. It's acquainted with it because it has some type of experience of it. Huh? But it's a false spirit that acts like the true spirit because it knows the true spirit because it was once anointed. Huh? So it, it changed from a, a true spirit to a familiar spirit. Right? Now watch this. You got people in your congregation that been with you a long time and become familiar with you. And they stop humbling themselves. They stop being obedient to the things that you say. Right? Because now they are familiar with you. Right? Because of the relationship of longevity. And they stop honoring you for a spiritual mantle that God has on your life. And they say and do things and cross the line. And when they cross the line, the true spirit that they have change to a familiar spirit. Now, you would know it. The Agnes would know it because it's acting like the true spirit. Because it's familiar with the true spirit. Even a pastor needs a revelation on it sometimes. Huh? Give you another example. Moses go down there to Egypt. Told Pharaoh, let my people go. Why let your people go? Don't want to let your people go. Huh? Who sent you? Look. So he's going to demonstrate the power. God of heaven sent me. Throw down the rod. Oh, poor son, Jesus. Huh? The men came. What did they do? Did the exact same thing that the true man of God did. But they had a familiar spirit. Watch this. That could do the same thing. Mm. Mm? People with familiar spirit can prophesy truth. That's how they deceive you. Remember, the devil can transform himself to an angel of light. So if he transforms himself to an angel like, he got to be able to do things like a true angel. Like a true prophet. Like a true preacher. Huh? And come familiar. And take on a familiar spirit. Huh? And as long as it's good times, as long as it's shouting and dancing, and as long as you are in agreement with your pastor or whatever you got to do, that spirit will never be manifested. It takes trouble sometimes. To manifest it. And when trouble happens, that thing will manifest. Oh my God. That's a familiar spirit. I'm going to show it to you in living color. Now, Samuel was an anointed man of God. The people rejected God and they wanted Saul. But guess what? You know that God. Because of his grace, his love, and his mercy, gave them people what they wanted. Watch this. And he didn't just let them get Saul. He gave Saul his anointing. He did. He gave. That Bible said when Saul walked away from the man of God, he changed to another man. Hmm? But he was disobedient. God told him, I want him to go all the way to the Malachites and kill them. Everything, everything, don't say nothing. Everything pisses in his wall. Kill it. He goes down there and do what he wanna do. But in his mind, he don't watch this now. In his mind, he don't see him being disobedient. Why? Because he's doing something good in his mind. I'm taking the good sheep and the good sacrifice, and we're gonna offer this to him. 
Now that sounds like a good, that just seems so harmless. But that wasn't what he was instructed. The house is the small foxes that spoil the vine. You got to do what you are instructed. He didn't do that. Huh? Now God didn't come straight to Saul. He went straight to the man of God that he called to the Lord. It repented me that I made him king. Hmm? And he told Saul, I mean Samuel, what he was going to do. And I know Samuel was hurt about it. Saul goes down there. Samuel may go down there to meet him. Say, have you carried out the commandment of the Lord? You know what his response was? I carried out the commandment of the Lord. He meant just what he said. Hmm? Because when he got disobedient, his spirit had already changed. That quick. One thing about it, everybody don't have the same level of mercy. Hmm? Somebody can do something ten times and God won't reject them. Somebody can do something one time and get rejected. That's one thing you don't know, I don't know. He said, I carried it out. He said, what's this bleeding I'm hearing? Oh, yeah, man. He just a few fabulous for sacrificing. Huh? Stay right here. Give me that thing. And he went and carried out the job that he should have carried out. Then he told him, obedience is better than sacrifice. Hmm? Obedience is better than sacrifice. So, dear hearts, be careful with your obedience and let another spirit come in. Saul, so when he did that, he opened a portal of another spirit. And the God took the kingdom from him, took the, the natural kingdom and the spiritual kingdom. Now our kingdom is spiritual. That anointing can leave you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for your disobedience and another spirit come in and replace it. And that spirit that replaces it acts just like the real spirit. That's why it's called familiar. Mm -hmm. But it can't obey you like it should. It can't stay in trouble and it can't endure. And so, all the way down here in his 40th year, he still hadn't learned how to endure and wait on an answer. Huh? Got that? Now, he's rejected. He's rejected already. But here, it manifests. Right? 28 chapter first. Read the first verse. And it came to pass in those days uh -huh. that the Philistines gathered their armies together for warfare to fight with Israel. Uh -huh. And Achish said unto David, Know thou surely that thou shalt go out with me to battle, Hold thou on and thy men. Hold on a minute. By this time, Samuel is dead. Okay? And the light of Israel for an anointed man of God is out. So Saul, when it came time for him to stand up and be king, because he did not go through protocol, through training, being obedience, taking instruction, on top of trying to kill a man of God out of envy and strife, mm -hmm. and never repented of it. Now watch this now. Now he said, I'm sorry. He said it several times. But he kept repeating the same behavior. Saying I'm sorry is not contrite and broken to bring about change. So since he never came to that, his spirit never recovered. Mm -hmm. But he forgot. But I'm going to show you what old man Samuel did. And he's dead. Right? Right? Israel now is doing what they want to do, just like people are in church today. They're doing what they want to do because we ain't physically in no building. You ain't physically before a man of God. So now people are doing their own thing. Uh, and they have, some of us will come back with familiar spirits because you cannot take time off, right? Don't pray. Don't fast. Don't read and come back the same, Right? So that's what I'm trying to get you in alignment. When I call a fast, do the fast. Huh? What I'm doing, I'm trying to get us in shape. Because all of us, including Pastor Walker, including Pastor Walker, right? Pastor Walker, 
does not end what you call fight shape. Now that I know, uh, mama, uh, when I say fight shape, mama, uh, when this reporter was asking Ray Lennon, he said, are you in shape? He said, yeah, I'm in shape, but I'm not in fight shape. Uh, that's how I pass walk here. Uh, I ain't never was called dead, uh, but I'm not in shape to go before uh, the congregation and serve and do the things that I may have to do. I might have to lay hands on somebody. I might have to cast demons on somebody. I might have to prophesy to somebody. I might have to heal somebody. I might have to do all of that. See, I don't want to do that here. But when I get there, I have to do it. So that's a different level of consecration. Mm -hmm. Hmm? These are secrets of <laughs> uh, that's a chip. Huh? All of us have to come up to another level. Huh? So, he never repented to David. He never told David he was sorry from a broken and contrite heart and spirit. Mm -hmm. He said it from his mouth. And therefore, he didn't change. And now he's in the general spot. Like some of us one day may be in the pastor's spot. He could not carry out the job because he wasn't prepared. Because from this very beginning, he was hard-headed and disobedient and went places and done things that he shouldn't have done. And now that he's king and should have all the ingredients necessary to carry out his office, the same thing happened 40 years later. Mm -hmm. This would pass a child prevent you all from falling to uh, and I'm trying to help you to be a soldier. Now, we're going to spend a little time today. This ain't going to be no 20-minute or 30-minute hour sermon. This is serious. This is soul-saving serious. Are you here? Uh, so you can shut it down if you want. But the soul you say may be your own. Are you here? Uh, read this thing first. And David said to Achish, Surely thou should know what thy servant can do. Uh -huh. And Achish said to David, Therefore will I make thee keeper of mine head forever. Now listen to this then. He said, right? And Achish said to David, Know you're sure that you shall go out with me to battle. You and your men. Right? Because what he knew, David, right, was a fighter. Huh? And David was the last of the anointed of this era after Samuel had died. So he's about the only light that they had. So then this man is reaching for his light, his anointing, his warring power and prowess. Huh? I want you to lead me. Huh? When people ask me about being a bitch, they ain't asking me because of what I have. Huh? Like Paul told Timothy, the things that thou hast heard of me. No, they, they didn't see some things. Mm -hmm. They know some things. They want what I have here and here, not here. And it took time, process, battle wounds, hurt, huh? All those things to bring me here. Hmm? Glory to God. Read what it says. Now Samuel was dead. Now Samuel was dead. And all Israel had lamented him uh -huh. and buried him in Ramah, even in his own city. Now watch this. Now the author had to make note of this, that Samuel at this time is dead. Now, the thing is really necessary not about Samuel, it's about him going to war. But the light, the opportunity, when I told you about grace, huh, he's dead now. You can't go back and get what's in him. You got one time to learn all you can under your age. Huh? One time. Because he's going to be taken away from you. Huh? He's going to be taken away from you. Y'all got to give me a, a, some time today. Because Pastor Walker got a lot to say on his heart today. Trust me. Uh, about leadership, about life, mm -hmm. and about you. Right? And about the saving of your soul. When I started this thing off about be strong in the grace, when Samuel was living, that was the time for Saul to be strong in the grace. Mm -hmm. To get whatever he can get out of that man. Because they don't come a dime a dozen. Huh? They don't come a dime a dozen. Right? So now the writers point this out. Samuel is dead. Now Israel don't have a light to look to. And David is the last of the light. Huh? And then he's a warrior. So that's why this man is tapping into him. Read. 
And Sammy and Saul put away those that had familiar spirits and the wizards out of the land. See what Saul did? When I tell you about familiar spirits, he knew about that. So when he was right, right, he put them out. <laughs> Only to become one of them. Mm -hmm. Huh? How you know he couldn't want them? That's why he was going to turn back to them. Because that's what he was familiar with. Because the true spirit had left him. Hmm? So he knew about those familiar spirits and he put them out. But you're going to find out that he's going to dig them back up. Because his true spirit is gone. So now he's going to revert to the spirit that he is acquainted with. A familiar spirit like unto his. Read what it says. And the Philistines gathered themselves together uh -huh. and came and pitched in Shunem. Uh -huh. And so gathered all Israel together and they pitched in Gilboa. Uh -huh, read. And when Saul saw the host of the Philistines, uh -huh. he was afraid. Start right there. The same spirit when God anointed David and proved David. And when David went back there, right, and cleaned up them poop, right, and fought the lions and fought the bears, and those things prepared him for ministry. And when he went, the same enemy, the Philistine, the same enemy, rose up. What was Saul? Huh? What was Saul? Ha! Because he didn't take time to take instructions and training from his leader and obeying his leader. Because you got to learn to obey your leader because trouble is going to come. He is 40 years late. He got to face the same demon. When you ain't willing to face your demon, Huh? Whatever it may be, in the face your flesh, whatever infirmity that it has, it ain't going nowhere. It's going to come back. Huh? Because Satan knows that's your weakness. He's going to bring it back. And if you don't learn to fight, if you don't learn to be a soldier, you got to fight when you're hurt. You got to fight when you don't agree. You got to fight when the body is saying no. Hmm? Because the same devil is coming back. They hit you in the same place where he know he hurt you at. And if you ain't overcome that, you're going to be overcome. Hmm? The same Philistine demon that he didn't go and fight and David had to go. The one that was proved. The one that served and did what nobody else wanted to do was obedient to his father mm -hmm. that told him to go out there while all the other brothers was doing something else. And even the father didn't know that that boy was being trained in unconditional ways to be a soldier for God. Hmm? Fighting lions and bears that gave that boy the courage on top of that anointing. Mm -hmm. uh, so when he went out there uh, and saw Goliath and all that wanted that office, all those brothers that wanted that position. Huh? King hiding in power. Huh? But that boy's service came out of him along with that anointing. And when he walked up and heard the voice of the man that found God's army, give that man that'll fight me. Huh? If he kill me, we'll be your servants. If I kill him, y'all will be our servants. Huh? Is this uncircumcised Philistine who defied the harmless of the living God? I fight. Good God Almighty. Huh? That thing stood up at him. Huh? Because he learned to be obedient young. And in his obedience in a small job, it trained him for the big job. Huh? So he ain't Google it like they do today. Ministers in training. Read these books. Uh, take this test. Huh? Be hostile. Follow your leader. Mm -hmm. Follow your leader. Be humble. Be obedient. And learn life and learn about God in real life terms. Because when you go to get this in, all the tests, when it's time for your test in real life, this ain't going to help you. What's in here is. Mm -hmm. What's in here and here is. Huh? What verse you at? Five. Read. And his heart greatly trembled. Look at it. Heart trembled 
uh, still haven't learned how to stand up and fight. Forty years later, still proper with being a man. Glory to God, being a soldier for God. Huh? Read. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, uh -huh. the Lord answered him, neither by dreams nor by young, Read that nor again. by prophets. Read that again. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, uh -huh. the Lord answered him not. That's what I want to read. Neither by Hold a minute. That's what I want you to get. He ain't answered him. He said answer him. He did not answer him. He did not answer him. That's what I want you to read. See, I want to stop there because this is what people do. You pray, and because God don't answer when you want him to answer, you jump and make decisions in your flesh. Mm -hmm. Huh? You get mad at God and everybody else because God hasn't answered. You got to wait on God. You can't rush God. You can't hurry God. Uh, Someone say, you just have to wait. You have to trust him and give him your heart. Glory to God. Uh, no matter how hard that test is. Uh, and when folks haven't learned to do that, when trouble come, when weight come, when it's come time for you to stand up and be a soldier, uh, you ain't going to wait for the answer. And then when you don't wait for the answer, what's in you is going to be manifested. Hmm? Read what it says. The Lord answered him not. The Lord answered him not. Neither by dreams. He didn't answer him by dreams. Nor by young. Nor by young. Stop. Nor by young. There is a place. Exodus. Leviticus. A few other scriptures. Samuel. That God gave the high priest and the high priest only. The Urim in the throne. The Urim in the throne. Now the scriptures doesn't give a whole lot of information on these two things. But they was used as conduits for interceding. And they was inside the garments of the priest. <laughs> Huh? They were inside the garments of the priest. And when you would see the priest, the high priest, rather, and when you would see the high priest with their you over their throne, huh? you knew then that he was the man of God. And those things represent that he has the ability to, to intercede in the people's behalf through the you in the throne. Huh? And guess what? It was only given to him. So whatever knowledge he had and acquired because he wore that, he the only one had. <laughs> uh, glory to God. And you got to serve him so it can come a part of you. Uh, so it can come a part of you. Uh, good God of my Lord, have mercy, Jesus. Boy, oh, I'm about to stop this shortly and keep making your part two. I got some stuff down here, as, even as it relates to that. Uh, read what it says. Nor by prophet. Nor by prophet. Prophet didn't talk to him. You didn't, didn't guide him. None. Uh-huh. Then said Saul unto his servants, uh -huh. Seek me a woman that have a familiar spirit uh -huh. and a good spirit. Now, just before we break down that, right? Saul didn't get an answer because Saul forgot. Watch this. He forgot the things that he did towards David the things that he did to Saul that hindered his relationship with the father. Why God didn't answer. Huh? And he did it 40 years later. See, he never got. But God don't forget. Huh? Listen to this commentary that this one preacher wrote concerning Saul. Not repenting. It must be quickly added that Saul did not inquire of the Lord in humble contrition and repentance to have truly repented he would have to have made things right with David that he did not that he did not do we can only expect an answer from the Lord when we ask on God's terms uh, regrettably uh, most do not desire to do that 
Huh? See, he didn't become contrite. He did not repent today. And here it is years later. His spirit is not right as a result of that. He did not obey Samuel. His spirit is not right. See, it compounds. It compounds. And now when you really need God to answer, he doesn't answer. So when God doesn't answer, you go to what you know best. Whether it be a familiar spirit, whether it be drugs, whether it be alcohol, or, last but not least, suicide. Huh? Pastor John, teach it, dear hearts. Teach all of us how to be a soldier. How to obey in bad times. How to take instructions in bad times. And in good times. We got to learn how to be consistent in good and bad. Huh? In misery, in pain, got to be consistent. We can't change with the weather. We can't. We know it get hard. We know it get tough. But you can't change. You got to be a soldier for God. Huh? And at this time, I'm seeing that young folks are falling by the wayside. They can't be patient, wait on the Lord, want to jump. God called me to do this. God called me to do that. And he might did. But you got to get processed to get in the office. Saul didn't take time out to get processed. So now it's coming back to home. And when he should have stood up as a king, he couldn't because he didn't do it all the way back here. Huh? So now he wanted God to answer. And why would he want that when God already rejected him 40 years ago? See the familiar spirit? See why he thinks he's still with God? But he's not. Read what it says. That I may go to her and inquire of her. Then the same people he put out, witches and people with familiar spirits, now that he can't reach the Lord, he's going to tap back into them. Read. And the serpent said to him, Behold, there is a woman that had a familiar spirit at Endor. Uh -huh. And Saul disguised himself and put on other raiment, and he went. Uh -huh. And two men with him. And they came to the woman by night. Uh -huh. And he said, I pray thee, divine unto me by the, by the familiar spirit. Divine unto me. Show me by your familiar spirit. Divine unto me. Huh? See, watch this. Familiar spirits is divine too. It just ain't a holy divine. Hmm. Huh? And some of my sisters are on this call today. They can remember. They used to be a lady to come to my house when I was small. My mom's house, my parents' house. Right? And you would give her something that belongs to you. Huh? And she would begin to divine and start telling you everything about you. Huh? And telling you about what's getting ready to come upon you. Even tell you who stole X, Y, and Z. Yes, sir. See, y'all ain't been around that long. That's why you got to hear somebody. I was a young kid. And if my sisters are there on this call, they can tell you it's the truth. That woman divined. My mama summons her to the house. And we pay her. She paid her. And that woman takes something that belonged to you and start, for lack of a better word, prophesying. Hmm? False spirits can prophesy too. Yes, they can. And be right. I want to was right. I remember I wanted to go in the military. I was that young. I probably was about 17, 18, going on 17, 18 when I saw her do that. I wanted to go to the military. That lady picked that up. Yes, she did. And I was going in there. My brother talked me out of it. Told me to go to school, finish, get through high school diploma. All right? That woman picked that thing. When she came in there, she picked up the spirit that I wanted to go in the military. Don't tell me that I'll have to experience some things. Old folks didn't experience some things. Sit down, hear somebody, let somebody train you. Hmm? We didn't see some things. What about seeing some things? You don't know what we know. Church folks, you don't know what we know. Let your leader train you. Let your leader lead you. Let them guide you. Stop being so smart. Humble yourself. Because it's going to come back to haunt you. Learn all you can. Because one day we're going to die. We're going to die. I promise you we are. 
And when we die, all that knowledge, all that wisdom, all that spirit, it goes in the ground with us. It goes in there with us. Hmm? Get right what you can, why you can. And don't be too much a talker. Be a listener and a follower. Huh? Read what it says. What verse you at? Eight verse at the end. Uh-huh. And bring me him up, whom I should name unto thee. So he disguised himself because he knew he had put them out. So he disguised himself so she would know who he was. Right? Because if she would have saw him, she never would have did it. Because he the one that put her out. <laughs> uh, okay. So he telling her, bring up Samuel. Uh-huh. And the woman said unto him, Behold, thou knowest what Saul hath done, how he hath cut off those that have familiar spirits, uh -huh. and the wizards out of the land. See, she don't know that's him. Right? Keep that in mind. She what? hasn't divined yet. The spirit hadn't come on her yet. So she don't know him. I'm going somewhere with that. She don't know him at this time. Though she had a familiar spirit, but she hadn't tapped into it yet. Uh, just like I tapped into the anointing of God, these people can tap into that spirit too. And they see stuff. Uh, they see stuff. They prophesy. They can do things. Uh, that thing will come down on them. Uh, just like that thing did with Moses. He threw down his guard, man threw down his guard. Did the same thing. Huh? So how you know? God got to deal with you. Huh? Read what it said. Wherefore then layest thou a snare for my life to cause me to die? Woman don't know who he is. Look, you trying to call me to die. I mean, trying to, you, call me, you want me to, 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 to use this spirit, call up these spirits, and saw them put us out? He, he's finding this out, he's going to kill us. Because she don't know that's him. He didn't disguise himself. Because he wanted her to pull up Samuel. Uh -huh. And Saul swear to her by the name by the Lord, uh -huh. saying, Same. "As the Lord liveth, there shall no punishment happen to thee for this thing." Uh -huh. Then said the woman, "Whom shall I bring up unto thee?" Uh -huh. And he said, "Bring me up Samuel." Bring me up Samuel. Uh -huh. And when the woman saw Samuel, she cried with a loud voice. She and pulled up Samuel. She cried with a loud voice, uh -huh. and the woman spake to Saul, saying, Why hast thou deceived me? For thou art Saul. Stop. You see that? When that spirit came over her, she looked through his disguise. That familiar spirit mm -hmm. allowed her now to know who he was. Not the knowing of God, a familiar spirit did. She tapped into it. And when she tapped into it, she saw who he was, and she pulled up Samuel. Mm. Tell me the devil don't have power. Now, some preachers don't believe this. Huh? Know why I believe it? Because when that spirit came up and told him that was supposed to be Samuel, huh? prophesied him the same thing while he was living. <laughs> yes, he did. Huh? Some people, I don't think they could do that. That was a demon. The Bible don't say it was a demon. It don't say that. Spirits are real, dear hearts. Spirits are real. We know that. They still exist. This is not some old time stuff that's not around. It's around more now than it was then. They are practicing witchcraft and familiar spirits. Hmm? I've seen gay folk full of Bible. Can't touch them. Huh? Yes. Pick you up. Huh? Promise on you. And then bend over on somebody that night. Hmm? Don't tell me, dear hearts. These spirits are real. They're around. They're out to the sea. It's more of them spirits than it are the true spirits. It always has been. At every age. Hmm? At every age. Read what it says. And the king said unto her, mm -hmm. Be not afraid. Now she got scared. Because when she uh, tapped into that thing, she saw who he was. Now she think he's going to kill her. But he need information for her. So he said, don't, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be scared. Uh-huh. For what saw us that? What did you see? What did you see? He's desperate. Because he need to hear from God. Because the Philistines, the same Philistines 40 years ago, they didn't come back. Uh, and they wanted to kill him. Uh, so he didn't do what he supposed to do 40 years ago. Lost the true spirit. Got a familiar spirit. 
Now you gotta try and come back to a familiar spirit to raise up a real spirit. Uh huh. Uh, he say, "What did you see? What did you see?" He's begging her now. What did you see? Uh huh. And the woman said unto Saul, uh -huh. I saw God ascending out of the earth. Good God. That, that woman tapped into the spirit, boy. She saw Samuel, boy. And that boy, look here, watch this now. Dead and gone. But that anointed man was still on his head. Glory to God. Huh? Dead and gone. Huh? But when she pulled him up, something come up with him. Good God Almighty. Huh? She saw that anointing. Huh? God, she called it. What's going Chief? Glory to God. Huh? Well, he did all lie. Huh? That anointing followed him down to the grave. Huh? You don't believe it? You, know, you can turn over to another scripture where the man of God was in the grave and they were fighting in the war. Good God Almighty. And one man stepped down there uh, and, 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 and died and, and, and he touched the, the grave of the, the man of God that was down there dead. Good God of mine, when he touched that grave, oh, he got up. <laughs> God of the God. Oh, God man is still real. And anointed and followed him to the grave. Oh, yes, it does. Follow him to the grave. Read. And he said unto her, What form is he of? He said, What form is that man you saw? What 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 did what did he look like? Mm -hmm. Uh huh. And she said, Uh huh. An old man cometh up. <laughs> he said, I see an old man cometh up. And uh -huh. he is covered with a man. And he is what? Covered with a man. The same man that he had when he was alive. Huh? The man of God is the man of God. Wherever he is, dead, live, on the boat, on the plane. <laughs> uh, glory to God. Be obedient. Uh, be obedient, dear hearts. Let's go back to service. Fast and pray. Turn your plate down. Huh? And give you a couple of weeks to have fellowship. Then we want to come back, dear hearts. We want to come back with a vengeance. Huh? We want to rebuild spiritually. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Huh? We want to get that anointing back in the church. Didn't like what I saw on the Lord's Supper. Huh? Didn't like what I saw. Thank the Lord. Huh? We got to renew this thing. Huh? Got to renew it. Come back, do some singing, old time prank. Huh? Glory to God, some old time song. Uh, glory to God, go back to the old way when those folks got to pray. Uh, and the old mothers got to sing. Put your time in, baby. Coming out from the rock. Put your time in, baby. Coming out from the rock. Put your time in, uh, the old song. Huh? Tell me what you know about Jesus. He's all right. Uh, yes, sir. Go back to the old school. Huh? If you call on Jesus, hear that some prayer. Call on Jesus, hear that some prayer. Uh, ain't had no bass guitar, ain't had no keyboard, ain't had no drummer. Yeah, that old school. Huh? Uh, if you hear him when you call him, hear that some prayer. Hear you when you call him, hear that some prayer. If you call on Jesus, hear that some prayer. Call on Jesus, hear that some prayer. Uh, yeah, glory to God. Uh, take it back. To the whole time away. Yes, uh, Hold it and go. Uh, when the mind begin to pray and the spirit begin to surrender to God and that nothing come down in the church then the songs will change. Uh, my mind, my mind, my mind is gone. My mind, my mind, my mind is gone. Well, that don't even matter I had. Uh, Hold it and go. And we had joy. Unspeakable uh, joy. Uh, one tambourine play. One guitar play. And the joy of the Lord Huh, came down in the church. Glory to God. Now they got all kind of synthesizers and organs and pianos and all kind of junk. Uh, still don't feel God. Glory to God. Huh? Because the music don't break them. But a broken and contract, repentant heart brings them. Glory to God. The Bible says a broken and contract heart will God not despise. And when folks come in God and repent of the sins, Hallelujah. And want to be saved. God is still in the saving business. God is still anointing folks. God is still fooling folks. He's not gone nowhere. Huh? He even had a song, God not dead. He's still alive. Huh? Good God Almighty. Huh? He ain't dead there. Huh? Some folk might think he's dead. Huh? But he's not dead. Huh? Glory to God. He's still alive. Huh? So, so I can feel him in my hands. I can feel him in my feet. Lord, I feel him all over me. Yeah, God's not dead. He's still alive. God's not dead. He's still alive. God's not dead. He's still alive. I feel him in my walk. I feel him in my talk. I feel him all over me. Huh? Good God Almighty. Feel that 
show, I feel that power. Hey, Lord, that you're not going to see them, that you're not going to seek them, Lord. Power the dog, feel them quicken. Huh? Then tell them shine all over me. Oh, uh, let your light shine uh, from your lighthouse. Hallelujah. They can all get a seal. Uh, Saul missed out on that chance. Uh, that thing wasn't shining. That northern wasn't shining. Uh, the human and the feral. Uh, it wasn't glowing. Uh, no proper to answer him. Uh, don't get in that rug. Let the joy of the Lord be your strength. Huh? Good God from Zion. Go a little further. And Saul perceived that it was Sam. He perceived that it was Sam. And he stooped with his face to the ground yeah. and bowed himself. Now he's going to bow before Sam. Wrong time to do that, he did. That's how folk do when your daddy going to fall all on the castle and everything. Tomorrow, good you will, but it wouldn't obey you when you was alive. Read what it said. And Samuel said to Saul, Yeah. Why hast thou disquieted me? Look what Sam is telling. Uh, from the grave. In other words, why are you disturb me, man? Uh huh. To bring me up. To bring me up. And Saul answered. And Saul answered. I am so distressed. I am so distressed. The same spirit that he hadn't learned to deal with forty years ago. Uh, Pastor got to train your dear hearts, men and women of God, to deal with toughness, deal with hardness. Huh? That's why Paul told Timothy, endure hardness. Has a good soldier. Huh? No man that born entangled himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him that have called him to be a soldier. Huh? God with the God. Now the same spirit, huh? Trolling him. Free. Can't take nothing. Huh? For running to and from this church. Running to that church. Because they can't take nothing. Huh? Somebody rebuke you over here. I'm going to run over here. You get rebuked over here. I'm going to run over here. Now you got to take your rebuke. Um, over the puke is better than secret love. Mm -hmm. Huh? People get over you now. You embarrass me. You pull my pants down. They weren't meant to pull up the top. <laughs> Read. For the Philistines make war against me. Read. And God is departed from me. And God is departed from me. Dear hearts, that's what I don't want to happen to you. You got to do a hardness. And right now, people are fainting. People are giving up. People are surrendering. They run it from church to church. Huh? Running here and bro. Here, there, everywhere. Looking for somewhere. When they need to just settle down mm -hmm. and go through. Huh? And go through. Hmm? David, I mean, Daniel saw this thing how people go in the last days gonna be running to and fro. It's happening. It's happening. Huh? It's happening. Paul told Timothy in another place. Huh? People's not going to endure sound doctrine, but going to heed to themselves teachers having itching ears. Hmm? Those days are here. They're here. I'm trying to warn you. I'm trying to strengthen you. Huh? When you come back, don't look for all joy. Mm -hmm. Going to get some? Going to get some rebuke? Going to get some reproof? Gonna get some instruction. You're gonna get everything necessary to be a soldier. Because God is calling you to be a soldier. Not a wimp. Not when things get hard. Huh? Not when things get tough. You run. Band ourselves together. Hold one another's hands up. People losing God. This familiar spirit is running rampant in the earth. Huh? It's in the pulpit. Paul talked about it. Talking about how these apostles, that's why you see the proliferation of them, right? They have familiar spirits in their hearts. They can preach word. They got good word in them. Huh? They can prophesy through their spirit and be accurate. You think it's God because it's accurate. Mm -hmm. Huh? Well, if you ain't accurate, you can't fool nobody. You got nobody prophesy all lies. Everybody knows you're cool. Huh? Everybody know you could. Be what it say. And answereth me no more. Uh -huh. Neither by prophets nor by dreams. Said, Don't bother me. Therefore I have called called thee, uh -huh. that thou mayest make known unto me what I should do. God ain't answered me. Hear what he's saying? He couldn't wait on God. 
Right? And Saul answered, I am sore distressed for the Philistines make war against me. And God is departed from me. And answer me no more. See that sign? So he jumped to do something else because God didn't answer. Neither by prophets nor by dreams. Therefore I have called thee. God pulled him up out of the grave. That thou may make known unto me what I shall do. That's what I'm doing for you now. Mm -hmm. Training you how to know who God is. So you'll know what to do. And you don't have to divine with nobody to say, pull up Pastor Walker. Because mm -hmm. I don't know what to do. And for me to do that and to help you to be a soldier, you got to humble yourself and hear. Huh? Read. Then says Samuel, Wherefore then doest thou ask of me, seeing that the Lord is departed from thee, and is become thine enemy? Mm. Y'all hear that? Read. And the Lord hath done to him as he spake by me. For the Lord hath ripped the kingdom out of thine hand. Same thing he told him 40 years ago. He rented it out your hand, and now they does. It's not a kingdom been rent out your hand. It's the kingdom spirit that will be rented from you. Taken. Gone. Read. And given it to thy name. And God will give it to somebody else that you serve right next to. Mm -hmm. Even to David. Even to David. Uh -huh. Because thou obeyest not the voice of the Lord. Then he telling them why he going to do it. Because you don't obey the voice of the Lord. Uh -huh. Nor executed his fierce wrath upon Amalek. Nor execute his fierce wrath upon Amalek. No word. Watch this. In our day, it's not a fierce wrath that I am to do. To go out right and, and kill somebody. But God's fierce wrath comes through a rebuke. Huh? And sometimes that rebuke has to be executed. Now, you might not like it. You might not, not want it. But when God tells me to do it, I got to do what he say do. It's part of the job. Read. Therefore had the Lord done this thing unto thee this day. Now, this is why the Lord did this unto you this day. I'm coming in. I'm going over time. Glory to God. May God bless you. May God keep you. Is our prayer. Had to get this over to you. Had to get it over to you, dear hearts. You're called to be soldiers. And you're in boot camp right now. Mm -hmm. You got to be trained. These are some evil times. And Satan is sifting folk left and right. My prayer is that you be saved. I know we took longer than usual, but this thing is important. Mm -hmm. And I got to do what I got to do. And if there's anybody out there that heard this word, and you afraid that you have went too far, crossed the line with God or did anything that could hinder you from receiving his true spirit or for you losing his true spirit. I want to pray for you that God will redeem you, reclaim you in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, Look on every soul that heard my voice today and feel as though they had went astray or that they didn't obey your commands or were not obedient. And they heard this word and they are fearing that they are still with you or not. I pray that if any such person out there feel this way, A, that you bring it to their attention and B, give them a spirit of repentance that they may be contract for their behaviors and that they may change according to your will and according to your purpose. I pray that you forgive them all their sins, all their transgressions, yes, Lord, and restore their joy and restore your power and your anointing and receive them back under your covering and under your anointing. In Jesus' name we pray. And if there's anyone that heard this word and want to give God your life today, I want you to repeat after me. Praise God, because you want to be saved in that day. But you don't know him now, but you desire to. Father, I believe that you gave your son Jesus to die for me. He died and he rose again the third day, shed his blood, that I might be saved. Come into my heart. I make you my Lord, and I make you my Savior. In the name of Jesus, I repent of my sins, and by faith I believe. 
that I am saved. In Jesus' name, amen. Find your good Bible teaching church. Praise God. Teach you about the gift of the Holy Ghost. Baptize in the name of Jesus and teach you the word of God in the name of Jesus. If you don't find such a church, keep tuned in the Bethel Deliverance Outreach Ministries. Praise God that you may know who God is. And after this week, you won't have to tune in by line, but you can come. Praise God. Praise God to our services on next week coming at 11 o'clock. Praise God. We thank God for you and may heaven smile upon you. And until next time, Pastor Walker is signing out. Peace. Wasn't that a dynamic word coming from our pastor, Pastor Alonzo Walker Sr. and his phenomenal wife, First Lady Wanda Walker? If you love what you heard, come back and tune in next Saturday at 12 p.m. where you can learn and grow in your spiritual journey with Christ and be a part of our wonderful family. We look forward to seeing you next Saturday. Bye!